Yes, so a weak base equilibrium, you would have your weak base, in this case this is ammonia, and you would have to add the conjugate acid, but in a salt solution. So the conjugate acid here would be ammonium ions, and you would have to add in an, a salt that essentially contained ammonium ions, and again making sure that the ion that it's with is not interfering. So you'd want to pick something that's a conjugate base of a strong acid. So chlorine, bromine, iodine, those are all good choices. So, um, and again, so it's because you would like to have both reactant and product present, so that way the rates would become equivalent uh, much faster. So let's talk about how this, how an equilibrium is able to resist the change in pH. So essentially, imagine if you have equilibrium happening and you were to add in a strong acid. So a strong acid is essentially the same thing as saying you're adding in a hydronium. So if this were to increase in concentration, the equilibrium would shift to the left to try and alleviate that product being added. So what ends up happening is you are, um, you are dulling the effect of that extra strong acid that was added in because you are shifting to get rid of it, right? It's, it's being used up as it shifts to the left. If you were to add in a strong base instead, so a strong base would be essentially you, like you're adding in hydroxide. So if you remember from what we've been discussing, hydroxide will react with hydronium. So meaning the hydronium concentration would go down and it would shift to the right to try and replenish that loss. So essentially, by having Le Chatier shifts occurring, you are resisting a change in pH because you are trying to alleviate the stress that's added to the system. So a weak base um, equilibrium would react similar, but obviously different because it's going to be different shiftings. So if we have a weak base equilibrium and we were to add in a strong base, the hydroxide concentration would increase and it would cause a shift to the left to get rid of this extra hydroxide. If we were to add in, if we were to add in a strong acid, the hydrogen, which essentially is hydronium, would react with hydroxide to become water, and then the equilibrium would shift to the right in order to replenish what was lost. So again, because you have shifting and new equilibriums that are established, you are resisting a change in pH. Okay, so we're going to look, take a look at some calculations with buffers. We're just going to do one example. Um, again, this is something that you can kind of, we can talk about at length, uh, many different um, scenarios, but um, we've already talked about acids and bases already. So I feel like as long as if you understand the basics of how a buffer system works, how can we make a buffer system, and looking at this one type of scenario, you should be fine, because um, we've already looked at determining pH with ice tables already quite a bit. So for the first one here, we have a one liter buffer that's prepared that contains 0.2 moles per liter of acetic acid and 0.2 moles per liter of sodium acetate at equilibrium. Okay, so meaning we do not need an ice table, they're already giving us the equilibrium concentrations. So we are to calculate the pH of the buffer, and we're going to use Ka to do that because, of course, acetic acid is a weak acid. Uh, now, let's see if this did not say at equilibrium and it just told us the concentrations. Essentially, you would have to create an ice table, solve for X, X would be your hydronium, and then you can solve for pH that way. Um, so in terms of the setup of the ice table, it would be identical to every other time, right? The only difference is now we're calling it a buffer, but I mean, really, who cares? A buffer system is the same thing as saying a weak acid system. So if I said we had a weak acid equilibrium, that's the same thing as saying we have a buffer. So here's essentially what you would do. So you have your Ka expression, so it's products over reactants. Remember, we're not including water. Ka value, we can look up in the back of our textbook, and we have these two at equilibrium. So we can just plug this into K. 
So essentially, our hydronium we're solving for, it, it's the same because these get canceled, but you should end up with 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And to find pH, you take the negative log of this. Uh, so part B, calculate the pH if 0 0.10 moles per liter is added to the buffer without changing the volume. So essentially, we are assuming we still have a 1 liter solution. So it would be as if we were adding 0 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid. So here's our equilibrium again. So what you have to think about is when, they're, when they mention they are adding in hydrochloric acid, that's essentially saying they're adding in straight up hydronium ions. Hydronium ions are what all of these hydrogens become because it will 100% ionize. So what ends up happening is this is going to cause a shift to the left because you're adding in 0.1 moles of this. So that means we're going to shift this way and we're going to create our reactant. When we do that though, you have to keep in mind, you're going to have some of your acetate that's going to react with this product. Remember, it's not like just one product can become one reactant. These two have to combine in order to make this. So what you're doing is you're basically adding in 0.1 moles of this, which will cause 0.1 moles of your acetic acid to be produced, and 0.1 moles of our acetate will have to react with this that's been added in. So the new concentrations and equilibrium are going to be the original 0.2 plus the 0.1 that's been produced. Our acetate ions is going to be 0.2 minus the 0.1 that is going to have to react with this 0.1 of hydronium that's been added in. And from this point on, you're essentially now solving for the exact same thing except with the new equilibrium values. So we're solving for hydronium. We, it's the same equilibrium, so it's the same K value. You have your acetate, you have your acetic acid, and then we solve for pH. So notice the pH before that acid was added in, the HCl, was 4.7, and now it's 4.3. So it did go down, which makes sense. You are adding a strong acid to it. But because of the shift that happened, it's not like it went from 4.7 down to 1. It was able to resist that change. And that's actually the goal of having an acid-base equilibrium. So the same thing would happen if this was a weak base equilibrium. Let me just go for a second so you can take a look at that equilibrium. The same thing could be used to calculate for a weak base equilibrium, except you would not be able to solve for hydronium, right? You'd have to solve for hydroxide first and then determine pOH and then your pH. So there's a, a few more steps, but essentially you're solving for the same thing.